Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I am taking you to the Louisiana River Parishes, where I will be showing you the best plantations to visit for Black history. After checking into my hotel, we headed across the Mississippi to our first plantation, the Laura Plantation. Now, there are plenty of plantations that were existing along the Mississippi River during slavery, but only a few survive today. Now, the Laura Plantation is over 200 years old. There were two homes on the property, and many of the Creole owners resided throughout its time as a sugar plantation. Uniquely, this sugar plantation was built in 1804 and was run by a long line of female owners. One of the women, Laura Lacoul Gore, is where much of the plantation history has come from. After her daughters read Gone with the Wind and asked her if this is how plantation life really was, she realized if she didn't write down the real history of her life on the plantation, good and bad, that it would be lost to Hollywood. As we take this step back into history, I hope it will give you a balanced overview of what it was like to be a slave on a plantation, how they rose from the ashes and became something more. Our next stop is Destrehan Plantation. Now, each of these plantations, I'm presenting them to you in the way that I suggest that you visit them, from the oldest up into when they broke free from slavery and how they regained their footing in society. Destrehan Plantation, I would suggest doing the tour with Diane Honoré about the unheard voices of the German coast. She's actually a descendant of Jean Baptiste Destrehan, who was one of the slaves at this plantation. She takes you through each of the slaves that were at this plantation, their cost or value at the time, their stories, their ancestors, and what they're doing to restore the genealogy of those voices and those people who were lost during the time of slavery. And this is where the Freedmen's Bureau um, first had their office here at Destrehan Plantation. So y'all know during the Civil War, um, we were one of the first places to be captured. The Destrehan family, of course, ran off and left. Uh, so the federal government seized the property. They started something called the Freedmen's Bureau, which is where formerly enslaved people and impoverished white people and others could come and get education. You could get medical care. You had people that would go out with you from the government and they would represent you to get uh, work contracts if you were working on another plantation, because um, remember, slavery is done at this point, um, and you needed someone to represent you to get a fair contract. They would go out and represent you and help you get that. There was a, a two hospitals here on Destrehan's grounds. At one point, there were over a thousand people that were treated. You had roughly maybe 700 people a day um, that were here, that were coming and going. You had people sleeping in the house, you had people sleeping outside in the slave cabins uh, who were no longer enslaved. So eventually the Freedmen's Bureau became known as the Ross Home Colony because the home was owned by... Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, I want to talk about the 1811 slave revolt. In 1804, the enslaved black people of Haiti overthrew the French rule and ended slavery on the island nation of Haiti. The French planters left their sugar plantation on the island and they fled to New Orleans, bringing with them some of their personal slaves. But these slaves had an important message of successful revolt. They banded together and they took down the Mississippi River Road and started burning plantations. A group of 200 were then brought to the Destrehan Plantation for three tribunals where 45 slaves were beheaded and their heads were placed outside the plantations they were from to discourage any more revolts. It's hard to believe that a place so beautiful could hold such dark history. But this schoolhouse is where genealogy effort by Diane and the people at Destrehan are encouraging those to come back and research their genealogy. Not everything lost remains lost forever. The next plantation that I want to introduce you to is the Whitney Plantation. Now this may be sensitive for some viewers, but this plantation is incredibly important. It takes you through an audible 
tour of memories and memoirs of those slaves who lost their lives. After seeing, hearing, and hopefully understanding the lives of slaves in this region better, going to Oak Alley Plantation will really help drive point the home I'm trying to make. The stark difference of skilled slaves that built these homes and were forced to live in shanty shacks that provided no protection from things like malaria, yellow fever, and other diseases in this area. Oak Alley is indeed gorgeous. In fact, it was called Le Petit Versailles. Combining the opulence of stately homes in France and with the traditional southern plantation homes. The tour guide at Oak Alley jokingly said that he was trying to outdo his brother who was still in France. He was very involved and well known in both slave trade and sugar produ production. Historically, sugar plantations often were much more brutal and backbreaking work to those at cotton plantations. The cotton plantations would often threaten to send their rebellious slaves to those down river, insinuating that they would sell them to a sugar plantation. When talking about Louisiana plantations, Oak Alley is often featured because of the 28 oaks along the walkway to the entrance of the big house. But Oak Alley has come a long way in its presentation of both architecture and slavery of the South. You can join a tour with a historical interpreter who will take you through the slave quarters, what it was like, the diseases they faced, how they made sugar, what kind of food that they cooked for themselves, and it really gives an overall great presentation of what it was like to be a slave in the South. I really appreciated they allowed you to tour the slave quarters not in a rushed tour this is an area that you can really let everything you've learned throughout the day of visiting different plantations really sink in originally called the andre plantation and this is where the 1811 slave revolt began there's an entire room dedicated to a visual representation of what happened that day as you move from room to room, you follow how life changed for slaves in the area and being from going from slaves to freed people of color. You get to know the story of Kid Ori, born on this plantation in 1886 and his rise to fame, as well as finding Louis Armstrong. The gentleman that runs this plantation is a 30-year journalist that has dedicated his retirement and the rest of his life to helping share the story of Kid Ori and those who were at this plantation. Now, if I want to turn it up, there's no volume now because it's a lot of electronics, so how do I turn it up? Just open the store. Oh my gosh! We go to 10, we open them both. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed exploring some of the best plantations in Louisiana, especially in the Louisiana River Parishes for Black history, especially realizing what it was like to live on the plantations, to be a slave, to go through the revolts and the Civil War in an area that largely was not part of the United States for a very long time. In fact, there are still parts of Louisiana where they only speak French. I just want you to keep in mind that as you go to some of these plantations, you're going to run into people who were ancestors of both the owners of the plantation as well as the slaves of the plantation. So please keep your comments and questions respectful. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you liked it, leave a comment or question down below and share it with a friend because more the merrier. See you in the next one, y'all. Bye.